Welcome. We are honoured to welcome you to International Jazz Day in Sydney at the Sydney Opera House in partnership with UNESCO, the Herbie Hancock Institute of Jazz and Art Unit of the Department of Education, New South Wales. This workshop session is a performance and discussion with Sound Circle Ensemble. The Sydney Conservatorium Sound Circle Ensemble will present a demonstration and discussion of their unique process for improvising musical interpretations of the Aboriginal languages of Sydney and Southern Sydney. The session will be led by the acclaimed didgeridoo player, singer and composer, Mr. Matthew Doyle, with jazz pianist, Kevin Hunt, brass player, James Greening, and the Sydney University Conservatorium Sound Circle Ensemble. Throughout the session, if you would like to ask any questions, put your hand up, make yourself known, and we'll bring a microphone to you. Please make sure you ask your question into the microphone because we are recording. Thank you. Hello, everybody. How are you all today? Thank you all for coming. Um, it's, it's a great opportunity for us to, uh, to practice what we've been uh, learning, practicing and rehearsing to share with all of you here uh, today. Uh, it has, has been uh, an honour for me to, uh, to work at the Conservatorium over the last 12 months, um, particularly with, with uh, Kevin, Kevin Hunt and, and um, my brother James Greening at the back there, uh, to, to share some Indigenous culture uh, and some of my dreamings, uh, dreaming stories and songs um, with these students and, and present them. That's what today is about. Um, we have three pieces uh, that we're going to, to play. Um, what, what I've done uh, at the con is to try and introduce um, my singing, my songs and in uh, dreaming stories from the local area of Sydney and southern Sydney, as, as mentioned. Um, and which has never really been done before in, in this sort of format. Um, so I've introduced language uh, phrases uh, that, are, that are then put into song form and into uh, music form through the students improvising uh, on their various uh, instruments and I guess creating a new song uh, based based on old stories and old songs but bring them to life in a, in a contemporary uh, ensemble kind of way. So um, that's what we're going to be hearing, hopefully. Um, uh, and as mentioned, uh, we have probably questions probably towards the end uh, of, of the uh, performance. Anytime. Just put your hand up in the, in the gaps of tunes. Yep. All right. Cool. So the, uh, the first piece um, is uh, You're a Welcome, or the Sydney language welcome song. Uh, and this is uh, about basically a welcome to country. But instead of speaking a welcome to country as we do, uh, we, we sing a welcome to country to welcome everybody. Uh, on, on to land. Of course, we're on the land of the Gadigal people, the Eora Nation. So, I'd like to acknowledge them. Uh, a lot of our a lot of our traditional songs normally start with an, an opening vocal sound, uh, and one that is quite common in our music is the sound "or," which is sung "or." So, uh, you can now uh, participate as well. So uh, we'll start with uh, with that sound. Uh, we sing, oh. You try that with me. You can join in if you like. Three, four. Oh. Beautiful. Then I, from there, I acknowledge the immediate uh, clans of this area of the Sydney. Uh, pretty much Sydney Harbour. So we've got the Gadigal people, whose land we're on, uh, the Wongal people, uh, Benelong's mob, just uh, west of here, the uh, Gumragol, the northern side of the harbour, and the language group of the Darawal people, where I um, pretty much grew up. So in acknowledging those clans, um, I will call out those names, and in response, everyone replies with this sound. Yee! 
Can you try that? Yay! That's it. So that'll happen after each one. So for example, I say, Garego. Wongo. All right, and I'll say four clan names. Uh, the last one I say is Gamarada, which means friends. So we're acknowledging the clans of this area, but we're also acknowledging everyone else who is today, all of you, and the band, of course. Um, so that's Gamarada, and the re response to that is ah, ah. ah. You know, like when you have a cold drink on a hot day, and you go ah. So it's a bit like that. All right. Okay. Shall uh, we give it a go? All right, now, the actual lyrics of the song, you can try them if you like, they're, they're, there's not a lot there. Um, if you want to feel like you want to join in and sing along with me or hum along, you're quite welcome to do that. Uh, Ungun Gama, you repeat after me, Ungun Gama. This is for the band too, you have to repeat too. Right? <laughs> Ungun Gama. Nia. Nia. Tali. Tali. Nura. Nura. Ungun. So, Ungun Gamania, Tali Nurangun. So that means we call, we invite you, whoever we're welcoming onto country. Tali Nurangun means onto country. The second, uh, the second line is Banya. Yeah, like you heard of a Banya nut before. Like Banya, Banya Jaminka. Banya Jaminka. Chalkla. Chalakala Nia. So Banya Jaminka Chalakala Nia means we embrace you and we extend our hand in friendship. Because when we welcome people, we welcome them as friends. So they're, they're pretty much the lyrics for the, uh, for the whole piece, uh, which I'll just be repeating throughout. So if, uh, if you want to feel like joining in, please do. All right, shall we give it a go from the top?
that. Was anyone singing along? Yeah? yeah? Great. Awesome. All right. Kevin. Okay. Do I have to turn? Oh, there we are. Thank you. Um, yes, it's a great, great honour for us uh, to play this music um, in our weekly tertiary schedule at the uh, conservatorium. We meet every Friday and uh, we have a room that's sort of tucked away from the mainstream and we, we have a lot of fun. Um, so we really, really thank Matthew for, um, for how he shares this with us and it enables all of us to begin or to continue relationships with Aboriginal culture, um, which is so important for white Australia to be engaging in. Um, so, uh, any questions at this stage? Anybody like to ask a question or two? Yes. Over here, I think. Um, I'm just wondering, um, Matthew, uh, what part, like how far back would you go to uh, full Aboriginal? How, how many generations down are you? You mean me, my heritage? You yeah, mean? your heritage, yeah. Uh, 60 plus thousand years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, to I mean, be honest. Like, I mean, like, um, like, like... I have mixed heritage, obviously. Yeah, 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 mixed heritage. Like, are you a half caste, quarter oon, octoon? Well, let me put it this way. Uh, you either are or you aren't. So you can't divide me up and say, all right, this arm is Aboriginal, this arm is Irish, this leg is Scottish, whatever. So you can't, you can't divide people up. Uh, and that's something that the, that the government, Australian government did mm. back in the day in the White Australia policy mm. when they divided Aboriginal people up into half caste, quarter caste, 16th, 30 seconds, all the rest. Um, so f for us, for Aboriginal people, um, we identify as being an Aboriginal person or a Torres Strait Islander person and we identify with our, our nation, our tribe or our language group so mine is Murawari and Muradri, but I was born on Gadigal country and raised on Eora and Darawal country. So this is also my country because this is my place of birth. Um, so to answer your question, um, I, my heritage goes back thousands and thousands of years. Um, amazing rhythm. The, but the time signature is like doing my head in because at some point it's got that constant rhythm of a lot of Indigenous music. But then at some point it sort of gave way to traditional kind of da 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 da, -da. But it then it also sounded like it had a kind of a triplet thing happening. So <laughs> I guess it's like, a oh, what is yeah. it? <laughs> yep, so we were putting six, six beats over two beats and sometimes five beats over two beats. Um, try not to confuse that too much with the primary rhythm that comes from the chant. Mm -hmm. So everything comes from that energy of the chant. <clears throat> Jeremy's got a question. Sorry. Hi, Kevin. Hey, Jeremy. James, everybody. Um, what instrument is James Greening playing at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the second part of my question is, did he build it? Oh, that sounds like a planted, plant. James. That's a James planted plant question. <laughs> Man, what a plant. Jesus, pardon. Um, it's called a diddly bow bass. It's a single string bass. Um, I've been trying to check out its heritage more, but it has uh, African heritage. Also, there's a, a classical, like an instrument from uh, very early classical that, uh, that has a single string like this that they play. Um, I first saw a man called Cooper Moore in New York playing this um, with Darius on alto saxophone and I just fell in love with it and it took me a long time to give myself permission to um, build one and it's built from found, found things. The, the, this is a, a, a curtain rod from, a, <laughs> from a, a skip bin that I was riding past and went, oh cool, there we go. <laughs> and this is a jewellery box that was a gift. Uh, from the man that helped me make this. 
who's a, a, a great uh, luthier. Yeah, thank you for the question. Man. <laughs> Sorry, it's got a huge amount of sounds. Cool. So, so you want to, you can get quite fat, you know, like. So you can do walking kind of stuff. You can play more percussive kind of ideas. So it's more like a, it sounds more like a berimbau from Brazilian stuff. Or you can go and do kind of uh, sounds like this, which you'll hear. Which is quite great for atmospheric stuff. It, you know, so it, it, it's, it's quite wonderful. And it means it, it, it doesn't interfere. It kind of hopefully is supporting when Matt plays the dark. The Yudaki being the didgeridoo. So, so James Greening is playing this instrument to support the bottom end, the didgeridoo rhythms, but also to give him a pitch variance and um, to work with Charlie there on the bass. So he's sort of midstream between the didge and, and the bass. Great questions, thank you. Um, <laughs> so we might move to the second piece now, if that's all right. Sure. And um, Matt will tell us about this piece, thank you. Uh, the, the next piece is called Midan, uh, also Miga Mara, my original name for it. Um, but Midan is a, this is a, a story, I won't tell you the whole story, it'll take a very long time. Um, but the short of it is, uh, Midan is a freshwater mermaid. So it's a story about a mermaid uh, who lives in the southern uh, part of Sydney, towards the southern highlands. Um, and a long time ago, as in Australia, over many millennia, we've had um, droughts, as we do at the moment. So it was a time of drought. Uh, the people decided that they needed to find food because everything was dying, the trees, the land, etc., the um, birds and animals. So a few of the warriors uh, grabbed their spears and they went looking for food. And they came across a, a river, a freshwater river, which wasn't traditionally in their country. Um, they came across this river and, and saw fish swimming. So they, uh, they started catching the fish and they were starving, so they caught the fish and ate them and went and looked for more and uh, uh, eventually they couldn't find any until they came to a, a giant uh, rock pool, sandstone rock pool, uh, where the first hunter, uh, the warrior, came across the mermaid and he asked the mermaid if there were any fish in her waterhole. And uh, she said, no, there are lots of fish in the river. Uh, and he said, no, we'd already caught those fish and ate them. Um, so the mermaid was, wasn't very happy with that. So uh, she said, all right, follow me into the waterhole and uh, you can grab as much fish as you want. So down he goes, follows the mermaid, down deeper, darker, and uh, he didn't come back. <laughs> all right. Um, a next hunter came looking for him and uh, the mermaid did the same thing. So he didn't come back either. The third hunter realised what was happening. So he went back and told the other guys. They ended up going back uh, to their families, empty handed, no fish. Uh, their bellies were full though. Um, uh, so the families were very upset with them because uh, they didn't bring any food back for one, but more importantly, they broke law, uh, LAW law. Uh, just in, in our culture is, you know, can sometimes be you know, a severe punishment. Um, so the, the women decided they would uh, call on one of their ancestors to, um, to help come and sort this out. So one of the ancestors heard their call, came down and asked the men what they had done and they explained. And uh, the, this ancestor said, because you broke law, from now on you're not allowed to visit this river now or into the future. Um, you're not allowed to take fish from this river. Only the women and the children were allowed to go to this river to f wash or collect water or fish because they didn't do anything wrong. Uh, and the mermaid was left uh, alone in the water hole. And um, the reason why she was so upset because the fish were her children. All right? The mermaid is half fish, half woman. All right? So 
Uh, that's why she was upset and decided to punish the men for taking more than what they needed and not leaving anything there. So that's the, pretty much the short of the story. There's a lot more to it. but um, So I've shared this uh, with uh, the ensemble and uh, I actually um, wrote this song and it has many verses. Um, uh, the one we're only presenting sort of one verse of of that that whole story in this in this piece. Uh, there are about eight verses that go uh, with the whole story, all in language, of course. Um, but in this in this part of the uh, in this uh, piece, um, where I'm singing about uh, just observing the mermaid, uh, where she lives. Uh, Watching her swim, she leaps, uh, lives in the in the deep, uh, dark waters, um, and also singing about the uh, the drought at the beginning and why people started to move. So the piece is in it was pretty much in four parts. So the first part you hear is the drought and the people travelling, the men in particular, travelling uh, to the to the river. Then the celebration of the river. As Kevin wrote down, river dance, um, which is a celebration of of the men because they've found food and they're celebrating. Uh, then the the next part is the the uh, the mermaid and the hunters, which is pretty much played in in, in duets uh, with all of the ensemble. Um, and the last part is tranquility. So it's the everything settled down and the mermaids left. Uh, alone in her waterhole. Um, so that's basically the piece. You'll also hear a few calls that I also do, some high calls, uh, which represent the mermaid's voice of, 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 calling out, uh, of calling out to the men, but also calling out in sadness for the loss of the uh, fish, her children. So that's it, me done.
tiene un varón mirando
Thank you. 
So I'll just quickly introduce the next piece. It's, um, it's called Flag. And uh, it's, a, it's a song I wrote a few years ago. Of course, it's in language, as most of my songs are. Um, and it's about, um, initially it was, it was about when the Aboriginal flag was created back in the early 1970s, it was one thing that united all Aboriginal people. We'd come together for big ceremonies, um, protests, bicentennial protests, things like that. So it was one thing that brought everyone together. Um, it also relates to how all different uh, nations would come together, indigenous nations would come together to share in trade, ceremony, marriage, um, music, song, dance, etc. So it's also about that and each, each clan would enter and bring their own individual songs from their community um, to the dancing ground. Um, and initially we, ha we would have, uh, because we run out of time, um, each of the musicians would bring their own song, their own clan song, if you like, to the, to the whole song, uh, the whole piece. Um, and we also did that with duets, where one would come in, then the next one would enter, etc., etc. But I think we're only going to do two now. Is that right? Two duets straight into the ensemble song. Okay. Yes, oh. and and uh, the other part of that is also um, being the flag that that does unite us. Um, is also a bit of a uh, a call out for a new Australian flag as well, one that would unite us all. So my personal opinion. But anyway, this is. Uh, uh, flag. Oh, 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 oh,
ensemble, thank you. We would now invite you to head up to the Concert Hall Southern Foyer for some light refreshments. Please make sure you have your wristband to enter that space. Um, and we will ask you to exit this room as quickly as you can through the doors on my right-hand side. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>